Alright, so I got the oil changed in the Xmark air filter, fuel filter, although we don't use this one very much anymore. No, not really. It's a, it's a great mower, but it's just not yeah. as comfortable as the steel. That has a much nicer seat and suspension, but they're both good mowers. And as we grow older... You know what? That's important. Even when you're driving, I get stiff. You know what I mean? Just yeah. driving in a vehicle for a long period of time. And speaking of which, we have a bit of a secret. Yeah. So never, very seldom I, am I ever ahead on videos. You know what I mean? True. Like what you see it's happen. What you get is happening. Like the day before or two days before that. Right. But we've been really busy and we've been doing a lot of different stuff and filming a lot of stuff. 
So we're actually about a week ahead on videos and uh, you're going to see this video on Sunday. Today's what, Friday? Yeah. But you're not going to see it this coming Sunday. It'll be the following Sunday. So we're about a week ahead and uh, we're kind of taking a week off because tell them what we're doing, Melissa. We're going on a trip out west, which we love to do and we've done it a couple times now. And there's plenty of things we want to see. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. So we're leaving this weekend, mm -hmm. and you'll see this video the day that we're coming back. Right, when we come back. And uh, so that next week, we'll probably just do one video on the whole trip, kind of a recap. Uh, but we're basically just taking a week off, head out west. We're going to go to... Probably stay in La Crosse, Wisconsin the first night. That's quite a trip from here. That's about 11 and a half hours, but we can make that day one. Day two, we'll go to the Badlands. Yes. Which is probably only about eight and a half, nine hours. So we'll get there in the afternoon on day two. Yes. Stay there, visit the Badlands that day, maybe Mount Rushmore. We've been to all those places. The Badlands is really nice. And then from there, We'll head all the way to Yellowstone, and we should uh, spend a couple days there, maybe dip into Idaho a little bit. We'll just have to see how it all goes. But right. we are driving out. Uh, flying is much easier, to be honest, but it's nice just kind of doing whatever you want and having all your stuff with you. We're going to be taking the Super Duty, and uh, I'm going to do one video. I'm going to do a short, seeing if we can get a thousand miles on a tank of fuel in this truck and i think we can what do you think melissa i think we can where it's going to be questionable is that day one getting through chicago it's going to depend how much uh, traffic it is yeah, yeah, you yeah. know if you're sitting bumper to bumper you don't get that good of mileage but anyway that's the story on all that yeah but yeah it's and you know what it's a nice comfortable truck very reliable i just think we should do it while we still can because we're not getting any younger and as we grow older, it's going to be a harder trip to make. You know, you just got mentioning, you mentioned about with the mowers, like getting stiff from sitting too long. And flying, it's easier, meaning it's quicker. It's not easier necessarily these days. Yeah, it's a nightmare, Like you spend really. a whole day in an airport almost, and then they fly you here and there and there. It's Do you ridiculous. remember that one time we went to Denver? And then yes. we we're trying to come home. We we're yes. getting ready to go to the airport. Literally first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. we go to the airport. Delay after delay. We got home about eleven thirty that night, and I told you, I said we literally could have driven home from right. Denver. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the story on all that. Yeah. When you see this video, we'll be pulling in from our trip out west. That's right. You excited? I am excited. I'm looking forward to it very much so. It's a great time of year. We always go in the fall. So, yeah, it's the first this time. time. This will be our first trip during the spring. So, that'll be exciting too. Might even be some snow in places. If anyone sees any posts on any of our YouTube social media from our tier axle, just ignore it. Yeah. Just ignore it. All right, we're headed down to the wood yard now, and we are going to do a little experiment. And just so you know, this was all Plumber Jim's idea. But I think it's a pretty good idea. Before we get started, I need to take the uh, splitter off the excavator. I'm done with this for a little while.
right, so this is red pine, okay? I have a bunch of this stuff. That's what this whole pile of logs is here. And we have been sawing quite a bit of this on the sawmill, kind of whittling away at it. Well, just a little bit ago, I was on the phone with my buddy, Plumber Jim, and this is all his idea. And he said, I wonder how this stuff would work like in the Brio pit or solo stove, something like that. And I said, I have no idea because around here, we don't burn pine. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because we've got really good hardwoods. You know, if you look at this, that's a mix of red oak and white oak right there. That is premium firewood. So of course, that's what you're gonna use. I mean, that would be like your wife asking, do you want Kraft macaroni and cheese for dinner or beef tips over noodles? We all know the proper choice. And since we have good hardwood available, that's what we use for firewood. But I know in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, a lot of people burn pine and uh, fir, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm not from out there. I'm from here in the east. And Plumber Jim said, I wonder how this would work like in the Brio pit. It's definitely gonna burn faster, but I'm curious as to how long it will take to dry. And it may be something that we use like in the Brio pit. I don't know, but we're gonna see how it splits. We're gonna compare it by weight to like oak. I've got a moisture meter down here. We'll see where it's at right now. This stuff has been cut for probably uh, two and a half months maybe. Yeah, two and a half months, but in log form, it hasn't been split. So what we're gonna do, we'll split some of this up, see how it goes, throw some in the sidekick here, check it with the moisture meter, and we'll stack it up on the patio. And once it's dry, we'll see how it burns. Who knows, we may like it, I don't know. Might even get a little crackling from it. We don't normally get that from the, uh, from the hardwoods, but we'll see. The first thing I learned is the hardwoods, like oak, uh, it splits much cleaner than the red pine. But keep in mind, this stuff was probably the third log up the tree where there's a lot of limbs. A little bit stringy, but I mean, it's not hard to split. It just doesn't pop like oak and come apart. Now, red pine, which is what this is, uh, I've had very good success with sawing it into lumber. It's pretty stable, very stable actually, but red pine is heavier than white pine. This stuff, when it's dry, say 8% moisture content, weighs around 33 pounds per cubic foot, whereas white pine, depending on where it's growing, anywhere from 25 to 28 pounds, per cubic foot when it's dry. So red pine's heavier, but we're gonna see how it compares to white oak. Now white oak, it's pretty heavy. It weighs about 47 pounds per cubic foot, and that's when it's dry. We're gonna see what this piece here weighs. Might have to lay her down, no. That's 5.39 pounds, okay. The red pine. Four point six two pounds. Like I said, they're about the same size. Now the uh, moisture content, this is just a uh, inexpensive moisture meter. Thirty yeah, around 33% moisture content. This needs to dry quite a bit before it's used as firewood. Now the white oak, it was split just today as well. Now this tree was dead for a while, but we're just gonna see where it's at. 
25.4%. Yeah, this has been dead for a long time, but this still needs a lot more drying as well. It will probably take longer, I'm sure it will, for this to get below 20%, and it's already, you know, 24.5%, it'll take longer for this to dry than it will for this to dry. White oak really retains the uh, moisture. I say we go up to the house and and try to burn some of this. I mean, like I said, it's wet. It's, what I say, 33%. So let's see what it does. We'll try to start a fire in the Brio pit with this. I have never, not once, had a fire not light using the fire starter. This could be the first time. Look at that. Isn't that neat looking? Let's go try. All right, we are going to use a very generous handful of fire starter. I don't think it's going to work. Tell you the truth, I think the wood's just too wet. If it does work, I don't see how this smokeless fire pit is going to be smokeless. It's going to have to try really, really hard because the fire starter is going to have to burn long enough to uh, dry this wood out a little bit. I guess we'll see. Get one more piece put in the middle. Well, as expected, it tried, but it just wouldn't stay going. Ooh, that's hot. We're going to give her another go. Well, that's kind of disappointing because that is the first time... I have ever started a fire using the fire starter that it wouldn't go. But, like I said, it's like 33% moisture content. But, I do think this stuff will dry much quicker than the hardwoods. So we'll have to try it again here in a month or two. See how it does then. Alright, I got her going the second time. Uh, what I did though... I put a couple pieces of cherry on top once it looked like it was starting to burn out. I still had a few flames coming up through and I don't know, a couple pieces of dry cherry on top and the pine is burning and surprisingly there's not a lot of smoke. There's really not and I have it built up a little higher than what you should. I'll report back in a bit. Definitely need to dry that wood first but uh you know, I think it may actually work for this. So Melissa was going to make dinner, and I said, you know what, I'll take care of it tonight. We have a fire going. I just threw the sear ring on here a few minutes ago. It's already up to 438 degrees. Normally, I don't do just frozen patties, but that's what we're going to do tonight since it's kind of a uh, spontaneous decision. golden brown buns
I'm about ready to throw these boots in the uh, fire pit. I've only had them a couple weeks, and this left boot makes a very weird sound.
right, so I'm down here at the wood yard now. Just starting to uh, button things up since we're gonna be gone for a little bit. I cleaned up in front of the woodshed over there. I'm gonna put some equipment away. Just sawed some stickers on the mill. It's pretty uh, windy out there. We'll get in here where it's nice and quiet. It's actually pretty cold today. I mean, it's probably 48, but with that wind, it is a little chilly. But yeah, those stickers, uh, I'm just kind of getting a list of a few smaller things for Levi to take care of while we're gone. He can cut all those to length. He's going to have his hands full, uh, you know, keeping his eye on Hunter and all that kind of stuff. That's basically a full-time job in itself, but he will have time to do a few things here and there. And uh, I'm actually pretty excited about leaving. Normally, when we go away somewhere, I'm good for about four or five days. And then I'm like, I'm ready to go home. You know what I mean? But since we're driving out west, it's going to take almost three days to uh, get out there. After you get past Chicago, though, and I always say when we drive out there, when you get to the Badlands, which is on day two, then there's a lot of nice stuff to see and things that we enjoy. But that day one, it's going to be hammer down to get out past Chicago into Wisconsin. I think I mentioned earlier, we'll probably stay uh, in La Crosse, Wisconsin the first night. Depending on how early we leave, we may even get a little bit further than that. I do almost all the driving, but uh, I don't know why I just do. I can just kind of carry on doesn't bother me but Melissa will drive as well so you know I might do six or seven hours take a little nap of Rooney let her drive a couple hours if we do that we'll get a long way on the first day but uh, yeah it feels weird being ahead on videos I never am matter of fact today I just published that video uh, from the trip to Messix. That's a good one. If you didn't see it, go back and check it out. It's a long video, but we did a tour of Messix Mount Joy location. It's just absolutely, it's beautiful. It's huge. It's big. They got everything and it runs like a well-oiled machine. And uh, it was a good video. I like videos like that. And looking at the comments, almost everybody really enjoyed that video. It's pretty informational. There were a couple comments, just a couple, and I want to touch on something. Normally, I don't do this, but one guy said, I can't even find it. I'll just tell you what it was. He was saying something like he's getting tired of watching me buy things because when I went to Messix, I bought an auger. And I don't understand comments like that. That's not how my brain works. You know what I mean? I bought an auger, and while I was out there, uh, Neil gave me a tour of the whole facility, how the whole operation runs. And even with Neil's channel, I didn't know this until we were done, he has never had any of that on video. All the like behind-the-scenes stuff, how all the parts and service and how basically how that parts everything moves you know what i mean uh that he's never showed that on his channel so uh, i was kind of honored to be able to film all that but anyway back to this guy he's bothered that i bought an auger and i get comments that like like that sometimes about people uh they get upset when i buy things i have no idea why my biggest takeaway from that video that i did was it's just a great story you know what I mean? Messick started, I don't know how many years ago, decades and decades ago. Small little location, starts selling equipment and parts, and over the years they grow through hard work and reinvesting in their business, and it doesn't happen overnight. And uh, that's kind of the same thing that I do with our channel. I reinvest into our channel, and when I say that, you know, I'll get comments occasionally. I liked how you did videos when you first started out, or I wish it was like it was at the beginning. Fact of the matter is, you know, I used to split wood right over here. I had a little uh, Husky 22-ton splitter, and that's when I started the channel. There is no way 
I would be doing the same thing six or seven years later. Number one, you would be bored to tears. You would have left a long time ago. And number two, so would I. There's no way. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, it's just, it gets boring. You know what I mean? So part of our channel is reinvesting in the channel. And it's a win-win for me because not only can I get some new equipment to show the people that watch our channel, it's different, it's new. People like that kind of stuff. The overwhelming majority of people do. But along those lines, I'm building what we have here and building a business here on the property. So in my opinion, it's a win-win. I just think it's oversimplistic to say, Oh, you buy stuff too much, so I'm mad. And you know, like Messix, if customers didn't buy things, there would be no Messix. If customers, if people didn't buy things, there would be no business. You know what I mean? Would all be like, I don't know, walking around the woods looking for a squirrel to eat or something. You know what I mean? That's what made America what it is, is people that do things, they buy things, they consume things, they buy some products make other products, sell them to somebody else, and it's just this cycle of life. And it always bothers me when someone gets upset because somebody buys something. I have no idea why that would upset anybody, but apparently it does. If we all stop buying things, it's over. You know what I mean? We have enough trouble as it is uh, keeping this country afloat, but yeah, I don't know why people get worked up about that. And I have been 100% honest with everybody that watches our channel. When I buy something, I tell you, I bought something. This excavator, I bought it. The skid loader, I bought it. Uh, the tractor, the tractors uh, on loan from Kubota. I've been very upfront about all that. Sawmill, bought it, my own money. Uh, a lot of channels don't do that. You know what I mean? A lot of channels get way more stuff than what we do and they might not kind of go into detail on how it all went down that's up to them i don't care but if i bought something i will tell you if it's something on loan or something that's a demo i tell you about that as well and uh, we have offers all the time for different types of equipment i had to pause there for a minute and cough but we have offers all the time from companies for equipment, uh, all types of different stuff. But if it's not something that I would buy, I'm not interested in it. You know what I mean? There's a lot of really good equipment out there, but there's some stuff out there that I'm not going to show on the channel just because some company wants to send it out here. I think it's fair to say uh, everything that we use, anything that we had on loan, or anything that we buy is of good quality, and uh, that's very important to me. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be out here saying, hey, this is the greatest thing in the world when it's a piece of junk, and then have somebody you know buy it on my recommendation. I feel confident in anything that we use, I have done my research on, I don't just take a piece of equipment because somebody is offering it to me. We turn stuff down all the time. Some of it would be handy to have around, I'll be honest with you, but uh, it's just not my thing. It's not how we do things. So I hope that all makes sense, and I hope for those few people that get worked up about when you buy something, uh, have a better understanding on why it's all part of the whole process. Not only does it help build other businesses, it helps build our business, and uh, if you're not, if you don't do anything, you know, if everybody did nothing and just complained, it would all be toast. You know what I mean? So fortunately, there's a lot of people out there that uh, still put their boots on every day and go do something and make money and spend it with other businesses and keeps this thing going. But. I think that's about it for today's video. I am looking forward to our trip. It's going to be a lot of driving, but we're going to see a lot of cool things. And uh, we haven't been out west for a couple, three years now. We used to go out almost every year, and we normally don't go this time of year. But looking forward to it all. 
And then I am also looking forward to getting back home because we got a ton of stuff uh, that's going to be happening here over the next couple months, right through summer into fall. I mean, cabin stuff. Uh, we're going to be adding on to this pavilion down here, pouring concrete in here. Uh, oh, there's going to be all kind of stuff going on. There is. So I appreciate you all being here. I really do. And uh, if all goes as planned, the next video will probably be a recap of our trip out west. And that'll be a good one. And uh, that's about it. I'm rambling on. Catch you on the next one.